Hello everyone and welcome back to another fantastic episode of GameStack Podcast. Right here on We Just Love Games Network, I am your host, Vendertron. Joining me this evening is the wonderful, the beautiful, the illustrious, Miss Shaleen. Hello, Shaleen. Hello. How are you doing? Ah, uh, how are you? I am well. Yes. Great. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. It's, it's been a week. How was your week? Uh, it was okay. Yeah, I was uh, really unmotivated this week, finding it very difficult mm -hmm. to stay on task. Um, I have a new task, though, coming this weekend. I am embarking on my two-year journey of trying to build a garden shed. It started last year when I started breaking down wood pallets. I remember the wood pallets, yes. So I have this, you know long and arduous road about building a shed out of recycled wood pallet wood which is actually mm -hmm. like some of the woods really good yeah it's and at the time strong. new wood was was like more expensive than gold it's ten dollars for a single two by four here yeah so that's where we're at um so if you want to buy 10 two by fours it's a hundred dollars <laughs> like that's stupid I remember when two by fours were like $2 each. Um, but anyway, so the shed will be happening. Um, and and that's that's pretty much it. That's going to be happening this weekend. Post some pictures in the Discord. Hey. But uh, welcome one and all. Make yourselves comfortable. We are Rickless and Reckless this evening. Once again, he sends his regards. Uh, this is episode 118, the one about the shed. And uh, Shalina and I are going to talk with you about some news this week we're going to talk about our gameplay some game stocks and we're also going to share a little bit about what the community is playing before we get into that i do want to mention that the show is sponsored by oak and crow coffee if you head on over to oakandcrow.com you can pick yourself up a bag of we just love coffee blend two dollars from every bag goes to the children's miracle network and i'm also very pleased and proud to announce that Hardware's Fleet for Kids has now raised $4,630 for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Yay. So excellent job to Hardware and crew. Um, some of you on the on listening on the show uh, right now or some of you live as well listening with us uh, have also participated in that effort. So great job, everyone. Um, if you are listening live, host us on Twitch. Uh, tell your friends about the show. Share us on social media, and uh, that will certainly help get the name out there. Um, we also have, I think, one or two new people in the Discord. Shaleen? What, who Actually, no. Yeah, there's nobody new since oh, Silence42 okay. joined like a week or two ago. That was last week, a week before last. Okay. I can't yeah, remember the last time new. we did a show. <laughs> but you out there, dear listener, could join our Discord. You could do that by uh, clicking on the link right below our Twitch page where we are live just now. Uh, and we don't have to be live for you to click on that link. It's there whether or not we are streaming. You can visit twitch.tv slash we just love games and join our Discord. Why should you join our Discord? Because that is where uh, a bunch of like-minded gamers and, and wonderful, wonderful human beings are having conversations about everything from the tomatoes in their garden to uh, what was it today was it salmon steaks in food Sam stack salmon steaks. salmon steaks yeah. yes <laughs> uh advice on on uh what kind of of computer upgrades to get and uh <laughs> gif wars and uh silly silly fish instagrams and and more Everything you could ever want is in this Discord. And uh, frankly, we want you to join it because we want to hang out with you because we enjoy all of you cool people. Mm. Uh, there's currently a waffle war happening in the GIF Wars channel uh, right now. So uh, there's all kinds of random GIFs of people shoving waffles in their face or Waffle House. Oh, I want Waffle House. Waffles are so good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyways, we should probably do a show. Um, we have been putting off new releases because uh, Rick was 
that's that's Rick's baby, but I will try my best to, to fill his shoes this evening and go through that list for all of you for the month of June. Uh, we also do have some news. Shaleen's going to take us through that. We're going to talk about uh, the stocks, what's happening in the markets, our gameplay, and also what the community is playing. But first, this just in. So as I said last week or the last episode of GameStack, you were probably expecting the nice juicy list of new games for the month of June. Um, and uh, we have decided to postpone that until today's episode. So sit tight. Let's go through this uh, list of new releases for June. So first up, June 1st, which was yesterday, two days ago. Day before yesterday. Uh, you can find Silt on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Switch and PC. On the s June 2nd, you can find Card Shark for Switch and PC. Diablo Immortal for iOS and Android. Uh, Gigapocalypse for PS4, Xbox One and Switch. And then finally, Soul Gears on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S, Switch, and PC. Okay, so this is spelled like soul, like soul. your soul. Yeah. That is in that is the essence of your being. And I I'm I want I'm interested. I want to know what this game is. So I'm just doing a quick Google here. Uh, maybe I could. Fight for your freedom in a sprawling fantasy world caught between the living and the fallen. Retro epic featuring puzzle platforming, Metroidvania explanation, exploration, Aww. and crunchy Souls-like combat. I feel like we talked about this last time on the Did new we? releases. I'm not sure. It looks cute, though. It does look adorable. It's a little yes. side-scrolling. Oh, it's so adorable. I love it. You know, I feel like, I feel like this is a game that uh, Tim would like. Probably. Oh, look at those giant swords. No, we don't want to subscribe to that. Um, this looks really cute. Yeah, I These like two. it. Little wizards and stuff and lava. It's it's giving me like Sonic vibes a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Uh, we also have, coming up June 7, we have uh, Spellforce 3 Reforced. <laughs> so I feel like they've just sort of like... Let's not call it remastered because everybody calls it remastered. Um, that'll be coming out on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S. Also, uh, June 9th, you can find Pro Cycling Manager 2022 for PC. Uh, Tour, de France, Tour de France 2022 for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and PC as well. <laughs> And then on June 10th, you'll be able to get Demon Slayer, uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Yaba, the Hinokami Chronicles uh, on Switch. Also, Mario Strikers Battle League on Switch. And The Quarry, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S and PC. The Quarry looks really interesting. It's, it's like a, a horror game where you make decisions and, and your people can die based on the decisions you make. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also have Starship Troopers coming out on June 16, Turan Command uh, on PC, and also Redout 2, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, X, and S, Switch, and PC. Shadowrun Trilogy coming out on June 21st, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, as well as the Switch. And Wreckfest, that actually looks pretty cool. This is something that I, I think that I would like to play. Um, Tell me about Wreckfest. It's basically like, uh, oh God, what was that game? Twisted Metal. So, so basically, you're like in an arena, right? Oh! And you've got cars, and you've got to like wreck each other. How much fun! How this fun is, is this so look? cute. And there's like you can like Mad Max it up. Check this out. Oh, so this you get this like giant time. semi. And oh! <laughs> so fun. Um. So, yeah, this is like all of the Twisted Metal fans out there who loved playing Twisted Metal all those years ago. You're going to love this. That, that comes out on fun. Switch, unfortunately, only just on the Switch, June 21st. You need to get a Switch funder. Deliver us the moon. You want the moon? Well, I'll throw a lasso around it and bring it down. Um, you can play Deliver Us the Moon on PS5, Xbox Series X, and S on June 23rd. You can also find Sonic Origins on PS4 and 5, Xbox One, X, uh, Series X, and S, Switch, and PC. 
Uh, also, on the 24th, Capcom Fighting Collection, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. And Fire Emblem Warriors, colon, Three Hopes <laughs> on the Switch. You will also be able to find Madison on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and S, Switch, and PC. And those are for June 24th. Then, on June 28th, we have um, Dis Disgaea, Disgaea 6 Complete Edition, PS4, PS5, and PC. Uh, DNF Duel on PS4, PS5, and PC as well. Also, Escape Academy, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and S, and PC, June 28th. And also on June 28th, we have Phobia, the St. Dinfna Hotel. And Phobia is spelled with an F. I feel like this is like a horror game. I've got to Google this because I, I just... It's a horror game. It's a bunch of nonsense words. Okay, it is a horror game. <laughs> Single player. The uh, key art has got a lady in a gas mask on it. And we've got a, a spooky hotel situation. Yeah, this looks like something that would make us want to curl up in a blankie and and just oh, uh, there's like night vision. That's even scarier. Mm -hmm. I'm getting kind of like Resident Evil vibes. A little bit. I wonder if there's combat. Ooh, there's I'm seeing a lot of puzzle solving. Yeah. I enjoy puzzles, so maybe this would be a game for me. If there's, it's usually the combat. I get scared. Yeah. And I, I can't succeed at the combat because I'm so scared. Yeah. yeah. But I'm good at puzzles. Well, also on June 28th, you can find MX versus ATV Legends on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and S, and PC. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. I kept watching that trailer. Uh, this is not a game for me. <laughs> Remember the time we played that game where Cup turns into a spider? Oh, yeah. Prey. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Mm -hmm. That was my last horror game. It was a good time. That's not a horror game. It's a horror game. There's spiders in it. Absolutely not a horror game. You here. can't turn them into cats. It's a horror <laughs> game. Anyways, uh, finally on June 30th, we have Outriders Word Slayer. World Slayer. Pardon me. Uh, um, I was hoping Word Slayer I and know. it was going to be like a typing game. Yeah. 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 You're just like mashing the keyboard. Uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, as well as Stadia. And PC. Stadia Apparently, still exists? Stadia still trying to keep in, in the race there. Um, Good on you, Stadia. Thought Google, keep trucking. Uh, thought Google abandoned that a while ago, but I'm not sure. Uh, Does anybody then, out there game on Stadia? Let us know. Amazon Prime has six free games coming for the month of June. Uh, so you will be able to play their next batch of games, uh, which include Far Cry 4. Uh, Escape from Monkey Island, Astrologaster, Across the Grooves, Calico, and WRC8 FIA World Rally Championship. Ooh, Calico is a town simulator that tasks you with rebuilding the cat cafe. Oh, that sounds like it's right up your alley. Then PlayStation also has their plus monthly games for June, uh, which include God of War, a Naruto to Barato colon Shinobi Striker, and Nickelodeon I feel like a All bunch of, of anime Brawl. fans just, just exploded. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You can dance if you want to. <laughs> you can leave your friends behind? Yes. Uh, Xbox games with gold uh for the month of june also includes avon colony avon colony um avon 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 colony so you colonize an alien world uh then there's also the complex skyscraper game project high rise colon architects edition so we've got two city builders this month yep also the platformer super meat boy super meat boy is such a classic i love super meat boy and rascals spelt skull like human skull 
Yeah, he, he, he looks skull. like a a little a child with a skull. Yeah. So that's coming out Xbox. That was Amazon Prime, also PlayStation. We also have added Epic to the list. Um This is is this is this for June or is this just this an announcement? This is current. Uh this is until June the 9th. And uh, ah, I, see. I, I yes. added this on because they have been giving away some stupendous games over the last few weeks. Last week was the Bioshock collection. And the week before was something else stupendous. I don't recall what it is. Uh, but this week until June the 9th, you can get Wolfenstein The New Order, which yes. is, is really good. Those new Wolfenstein games are fantastic. They are. They are. They really are. Um, Rick loves them. Have you played them? I've played portions of two of them. Okay. I've never finished one. Okay. But. Okay. I definitely want to watch some more Hunt Showdown. Ah, I loved Hunt Showdown. I, I really enjoy I don't enjoy playing it, but I definitely enjoy watching it. Have you played it? No. No? Well, how do you know you wouldn't enjoy playing because it? Because there's bugs. <laughs> the so. spider enemy in particular is is singularly horrifying yes it's, it's yeah the creature design in hunt showdown is is oh it's very spooky but i i do love the art style on uh pretty much everything else it's, it's... i i can definitely handle it when i'm not in the driver's seat and i know that mm -hmm. a not that a spider's not actually going to kill me yeah y you know i i so. think that game is great because it's just such chaos it has that heart pounding pub g aspect of uh, waiting for the other team and and trying to figure out how to strategize against the other team and and yeah. planning on where to be when and yeah. but then there's also these horrifying monsters and just gore and horror and uh old piano fortes and i mean what kind of game combines all of those things hunt showdown that's what kind and it's, it's, a, it's a good experience but it's not a game i would ever 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 play by myself i, I have to have yeah team you've got to play, play that people. one definitely mm -hmm. not playing that one alone so shaleem what else have you got in your in your docket for news for us we do have some news today and uh, as always shout out to joseph tao for helping compile it and, and making all of our lives easier um the Summer Game Fest is approaching. Of course, this is Jeff Keighley's event that is sort of sort of the replacement that we have for uh, E3, since E3 is not happening. We do have Summer Game Fest coming. There will be lots of announcements. This article from Brendan Sinclair uh, on gamesindustry.biz outlines the companies that are planning to participate in Summer Game Fest. Okay. Uh, and just, just so you know, Game Fest will be June 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. GMT. And uh, it will be streaming on a variety of platforms. So you can watch it in, in many different places. Just do, do yourself a Google. But you can find news from 2K, Activision, Atlas, Bandai Namco, Bloober Team, Capcom, Coffee Stain, Deep Silver, Devolver Digital, Digital Extremes, Dot Emu, Electronic Arts, Epic Games, Focus Entertainment, Frost Giant Studios, Humble Games, Level Infinite, Media Tonic, Miho Yo, Netflix, PlayStation, Raw Fury, Samsung Gaming Hub, Sega, Skybound Games, Square Enix, Steam, Studio MDHR, Tribeca Festival, Warner Brothers Games, and Xbox. Some of these are notable. We know what will be coming from some of them. Like, for example, uh, we know that um, Focus Entertainment is going to be bringing us a new look at the follow-up to... Uh, I'm, what's that look, Fender? What's that look? It's the hype train? Are you do listening I, to the hype train? Do I hear our unofficial fourth host? You hear the hype train in the background. <laughs> yes, you probably also hear my air conditioner. But we know that Focus Entertainment is going to be bringing us the uh, the follow up to a, a game stack game of the year, uh, which I just blanked on the name. The one with the rats, uh, Plague Tale, Tale Innocence. Innocence. Yeah, the follow up to that. I'm sure we're going to get some more news mm -hmm. there. And Skybound Games will likely be showing us uh, a look at. The Wolf Among Us 2, I'm hoping. Ooh. And I think they're also working on uh, a game based on The Expanse, uh, which is, is exciting for people. 
and there are other things like uh, Studio MDHR. What are they working on? Who knows? Who knows? Some so I names some pretty big names on that list too. Un- I think unusual contenders mm-hmm. like Warner Brothers, for example, mm-hmm. and and Sega Warner Brothers and Netflix. I, Warner Brothers being on the list may lead to a look at the Harry Potter game. I believe that is a Warner Brothers mm, game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Very excited, and I'm sure that some of these studios have things that we can't predict uh, up their sleeves. And I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of interesting to see some of these companies that aren't really major contenders in the the gaming industry sort of coming into the fold now. It really sort of is a testament to what they're trying to do, which, mm-hmm. you know, we've talked about quite a bit on past episodes of, of GameStack podcast. But one of the things about uh, I, I want to say E3 season, but since E3 doesn't exist, like game <laughs> announcement festival season uh, is that it, it really brings together people with a love for games. And uh, that's something that is really evident in this lineup you have 2k and capcom and some of the heavy heavy hitters but then you've also got coffee stain who are coffee stain i don't know Mm -hmm. Uh, i i follow a lot of gaming news i've never heard of coffee stain and so we've we've got big heavy hitters up with uh some smaller devs and publishers and I'm looking forward to seeing that because they're all passionate people making things to make us happy and and hopefully give us hours and hours of joy. Well, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and ask the question that we're all wondering. Who is Kanye West going to approach this year? (laughs) Well, maybe that's why Nintendo is not on the list because... Because Miyamoto is too busy working with Kanye. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Um, speaking. What of if tr- he just walked up onto the stage and took Jeff Keighley's microphone and was like, I'm going to let you finish, but. Uh... Vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also, I think we should talk about, and I'm not sure if you've got it in your news, but we were talking about um, showcases and things. Uh, Bethesda. Bethesda's uh, the Bethesda slash Xbox yes. uh, showcase will be taking place Sunday, June twelfth. Mm-hmm. We covered a. that very briefly on yeah. on a previous show. Yes. So reminder for anyone listening, um, and you know, uh, are we gonna are we gonna do a, a showcase like a, a special episode? I'm of that not sure. Soon? We need to work out the details of that. That's my mother's birthday, Ooh. and I always, I always miss my mother's birthday because I'm at E3, mm. and I, I probably shouldn't this time. But I, I don't know. I'll talk to her and see. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we can work something out. Well, maybe we could steal an hour out of her day mm-hmm. and cover it for the people's. Yeah, indeed. So what we're gonna need to look into that and see what Rick's schedule is as well. Yes, it is a Sunday, so it's possible. Oh, coffee stained at Valheim. Thank you, Archon. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, that's. I wonder if they will be bringing an expansion or new content for Valheim or something completely brand new. Right. Yeah. Our next article is about the dreaded loot box. Oh no. And eighteen countries have backed a report calling for regulations on loot boxes. This is a gamesindustry.biz article written by Daniel Partis, and the Norwegian Consumer Council has released a report on the ongoing impact of loot boxes on the games industry. It's backed by 20 consumer groups in 18 European countries. The report outlines the history of monetization in games and how loot boxes and in-game currency have evolved to, and I quote, exploit consumers. Uh, It highlights deceptive design in games and tricks that exploit cognitive or behavioral biases to incentivize spending. And loot boxes are often aggressively marketed uh, by advertising the possible rewards, which can be deceptive, according to the report. So two case studies of particularly predatory practices are included in the document. It discusses how loot boxes are implemented in FIFA 22 and in Raid Shadow Legends and some of the problems that this presents. 
The report lists some actions that the industry and its regulators can take to improve this problem, including banning the aforementioned deceptive design, yeah. denoting all in-game purchases in real-world currency. I think that would be a big one instead of instead of having fake currencies to sort of detach you from the reality of the money you're spending. Yeah. Not implementing loot boxes in games that are aimed at miners, more transparency around algorithms that determine the outcome of a purchase, and more enforcement around consumer rights in games. I really, really would like more transparency around what determines the outcome of your purchase. There are so many games out there that do not tell you what the odds are when you when you purchase your loot box, you think, okay, I have a chance at getting this cool skin. How high is that chance? Or how low is that chance? Yeah. You know, if, if it's if it's a minuscule chance, then you should know that. You, the consumer should have that information. And the report adds that if these remedies do not alleviate the issues, the industry should consider a ban of paid loot boxes in games. And I personally would be super okay with that. I do not like loot boxes. I don't necessarily mind microtransactions. I, I don't mind them when they are cosmetic in particular. But you know what but, you're getting. You know what you're yes, getting with microtransactions. I want to be able to, if I'm going to make a purchase in a game, I want to just know what I'm purchasing and buy it. I don't want a a chance at maybe getting the thing that yeah. I want. Archon brings it's up a good point. Terrible. Whatever the odds are, they're never in your favor. Absolutely the house, true. The house always wins, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I I am definitely one hundred percent on the argument that money, real money, should not be tied to loot boxes. Um. I believe I think that developers will find a workaround if that happens. So you will be paying money for in-game currency, which basically translates to, and then you'd be using that in-game. You currency. know that's that's what that's what you do in it's most kind of games already now. happening. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the so that's one concern. The other thing is is if they switch to some sort of model to try to maintain loot boxes that used in-game currency alone that you've earned through in-game actions and not through purchasing diamonds or you know coins or gems whatever. or whatever um that doesn't address the issue of addiction right so we are still placing um vulnerable kids in an environment where they become they can become addicts right and i mean we know that the evidence that exists around childhood development tells us that people don't actually fully develop their brains completely until about the age of 25. Um, and that's across both males and females. Um, so, you know, even when people are of age at 18 or 21 or 22 or whatever state or country you live in, uh, there are still some vulnerabilities there in, in decision-making skills, right? So um, I'm, I'm definitely on the fence about trying to find a workaround uh, or a reasonable approach to using in-game in-game currency to replace the the, the actual monetary. Well, what they're what they're talking about is is saying instead of hey, this loot box costs a thousand gems, saying this loot box costs nine dollars and ninety nine cents, which is exactly yeah. exactly what we need. Yeah, yeah, I I would like to see it go further. Mm -hmm. I would like to see people understand the consequences of loot boxes um, and that I don't know actually I don't even know Shaleen because I hate loot boxes. the very existence and idea of loot boxes is what I don't like regardless of whether or not you pay for them so I despise them. it's not as harmless as you know what kind of trading card you're going to get in a pack of bubble gum. I mean, I totally realize that I'm aging myself there, but like, that's the mentality, right? Is that like surprise element of what you're going to get this time. And, but I mean, we've seen this in all other areas. Look at Pokemon cards or magic, the gathering 
card, magic cards and other tabletop games where you buy card packs that you don't know what you're getting. And it's just sort of a lottery. Mm -hmm. I mean, are loot boxes any different than that? Well, it is possible, though, to go online and buy the particular magic card that you want. That's true. You know, and you'll probably be paying an extortionary price. That's a really good one. But still, you can purchase it outright. And that's not something you can do, like the resale of the items you don't want and purchasing from other players. That's not something you can do with loot boxes and video games. Yeah. So... Anyways, great discussion. If you've yes, got so thoughts about loot boxes and you want to voice your opinion on the show, feel free to send us an email at info at we just love games com. We would love to hear what you have to say. So if you'd like a, a little window into my life, uh, I still haven't hooked up that new PlayStation that I got. Really? So, well, yeah, I mean, I've been it's so been busy. A week. It's, been, it's a week. been it's been a hard time. I'm hoping that this weekend will be will be the weekend it's be and all hook that thing up and i'm thinking about getting the spider-man games the miles morales spider-man game has got a, a cat that wears a spider-man mask and wow. i'm pretty stoked about that what more do you need yes uh <laughs> but uh if I like you we... <laughs> sorry i'm sorry i gotta say it now i know you were going into a thing i like how we just talked about loot boxes and like convincing people to spend money and you're you're talking about like buying a game because a cat wears a spider outfit. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yes, uh, but if you uh, have a PlayStation that you have hopefully hooked up by now, you'll be interested in the PlayStation State of Play that happened, I believe, yesterday evening. Correct. And we have a roundup of some of the bigger announcements from this IGN article by Adam oh, Bankhurst, and, okay. and some of this was pretty exciting. Final Fantasy 16 has gotten a release window. That game should be coming out in summer of 2023. I haven't watched this trailer, uh, but it was it had some actual gameplay according to this article, which is exciting. Oh really? And have it you, includes. Have you played any Final Fantasy? I I played about 10 hours of the boy band road trip one. Um, 15, I think that was 15. Um, they were in a car. It was it was like four guys hanging out in a car. Yeah. Uh, played a little bit of that, and I liked it. But it just you know, there's so many games it yeah. dropped off. Quite quite right. Yeah. I think that's the only Final Fantasy I've ever played. Maybe. Oh, um, that's good. Yeah, they they call it the final one, but there's always another. It seems like. Uh, the protagonist Clive Rossfield was featured in this trailer and it showed how he and his team will take on the many, many enemies that will get in your way in the game's story. And uh, the game can currently be played from start to finish. The team is using this time to polish the game and make it the best that they can. So that's exciting news. That means that it's likely to hit that release window instead of, uh, instead of being delayed like so many games have been lately. Nice. And here's one that I, I really regret that Rick isn't here for this one. The Resident Evil 4 remake has been officially announced. And this is oh. huge news for Resident Evil fans. Resident Evil 4 is largely considered by the community to be one of the greatest survival war games ever made. Uh, I, I played it without nostalgia goggles and I thought it was terrible. <laughs> I thought the controls were just atrocious. I thought it was really bad, um, but I, I am very much looking forward to having a survival horror Sunday situation of watching, you know, Rick play through it and, and helping with puzzles and stuff. They are updating this game with, uh, they're reimagining the storyline while keeping the essence of its direction, modernizing the graphics and updating the controls to a modern standard. And that is the thing that I find the most exciting, those horrible controls. It, it was like you could not walk and shoot at the same time in Resident Evil 4, which I, I think was probably pretty normal at the time that the game was originally released. Right. But it was it was a long time after that that I ever touched it. And it just felt real bad, man. Felt so you're going to play it, right? 
I might play it. I don't know. I still haven't I gotten any farther in Resident Evil Village. I uh, I got real scared in, in the castle, which is only like a few hours in. It's still very early on in the game. So I, I get scared and, and I stop playing because I'm so scared. I feel um, like I feel like when you retire, you're just going to be playing all of the games that you didn't have time to catch up on. Yes, that seems likely <laughs> in in my old folks nursing home. They're going to come to my room and find me with all of these antique consoles. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. Great, great aunt Shaleen has yeah. still got a PS5 that works. Shaleen, it's time to take She your only pills. took it out of the box <laughs> last week. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, man. What else? Terrible. What else? What else you got for us? What else? Speaking of Resident Evil, Resident Evil Village will be uh, remade for VR. It will oh. be available for the PlayStation VR 2. Uh, the complete campaign will be available. And this sounds absolutely awful to me. Just, just I, I don't want that one bit. Uh, it, it's a very, very scary time. And I, I don't want to see that in VR. I, I don't want to experience that firsthand. No, thank you. Uh, but if, if you're into that, good for you. This is, this is the thing for you. I'm just going to be never doing that ever. Okay. <laughs> Street Fighter VI had a gameplay trailer and uh, they expected to release in 2023. I didn't realize they were making Street Fighter VI, but it's been a, a very, very long time since a new Street Fighter was released. Looks so. fantastic. Yeah. Fighting game fans are going to love that. Looks absolutely fantastic. Oh my gosh. The graphics are gorgeous. Yeah. Just gorgeous. Yeah. So. Look at that environment. Um, and Horizon Call of the Mountain will be coming to PSVR 2. This is a new story set in the world of the first two Horizon games, and players will become a former Shadow Karja warrior named Rias Rias who is looking to redeem himself by investigating a grave new threat to the Sundom. He excels at climbing and archery, which are great for VR, and will have to do things such as scale perilous mountains and take down mighty machines like the Thunderjaw. So you will not be reprising your role of Aloy, uh, but you will run across Aloy and other familiar faces on this journey. And it should be a, a pretty exciting uh, use for PSVR too. So. Those games are gorgeous, and that is an environment that I might like to spend some time in in a VR situation. So, yeah, it's, it's Horizon really cool. Zero Dawn. Like I'm, as you know, I'm playing through mm -hmm. the first one, and it's beautiful. It's um, so pretty. I'm definitely enjoying it, and the story is so rich. Um, I'm I'm struggling a little bit though to stay focused in the game. Um, but uh, it definitely tells you, shows you your limits when you try to go yeah. in an area where you're not supposed to be. Um, but I, I, da I, I'm, I am planning to finish that first one and then move on to uh, the second one. And, and this one's really cool. I like the idea that they have a, a new main character. Mm -hmm. um, Aloy is, is certainly um, a significant female protagonist in, in, in Horizon. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of Aloy. Yeah, and uh, but it is it will be nice to see other new main characters, I think, as well. Well, by the time you get around to Horizon Forbidden West, the second game in the series, uh, you will be looking at a new major update for the game that will add a performance mode, transmog, a way to re reset skills, mm -hmm. an ultra hard difficulty, new game plus, new game plus trophies, and more. The update will also add a new herbalist vendor and improved temporal anti-aliasing. I don't know what temporal anti-aliasing means, uh, but that, that uh, update is live now. So if temporal anti-aliasing is important to you, <laughs> it's there. You can, you can check that out right now in Horizon Forbidden West. The Callisto Protocol has uh, had a new trailer that confirms a December 2022 release date. And I, I believe Callisto Protocol is a spooky game. I saw a trailer for it, but I, I didn't really, I don't know much about it. Uh, I'm much more excited by the next game, which is incredibly predictable. 
uh, I, I'm so predictable sometimes. Stray, in which you play as a as a cat, a stray cat in a cyberpunk dystopia. Stray has a release date, and it will be free for PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium I members. It, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh my God, Jaleed, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> I, I have yes. to do this. Look at this kitty. Look at how look he at looks. Him. He's just, I'm just a meerkat sneaking around the tent. This, and he's wearing a little backpack. Look at that. How precious. It will release on July 19th, 2022. So I am I am very eager to play Stray. I'm totally just... going to. Wait, do you have to have a PS5? I think so, yes. I think it's only on PS5 for now. So six months can, from now, you a can year come from over. Now. You can come over to my house and we'll play Stray. A year It'll from now, great. I'm gonna be like, "Hey guys, you remember that time I bought a PlayStation Five just so I could be a cat <laughs> <laughs> in a video game?" <laughs> Doesn't this look amazing? Who, I are just, those, who are these robot people with the happy faces? I don't know, but I, I want to become this cat. And oh, meet them. I totally want to be a stray cat. Look at him that popping so out of the good. box. Oh, he's so <laughs> cute. Run, little kitty. Run. Quick shout out to everybody who's joining us live in the chat today. We have uh, Thankanak, Thankanak, and uh, Tasman, NY, Mr. Nailhead, Doc Raw, Vodka Knockers, uh, and Archin. Very, had to, very glad to see all of you. And of course, for those listeners listening after the fact, once the show is posted, we love you. Thank you for your continued support. Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered will both be coming to PC in 2022. Nice. So that's nice. You can you can definitely check those out on PC. I've heard very good things about those games, and I'm, I'm looking forward to checking them out. No Man's Sky will be coming to PlayStation VR 2. And I think that is going to be a good fit for VR. A very, yes. very good fit for VR. Um, well, uh, Rick has played it in VR and he said it's it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Season, A Letter to the Future, will be released in autumn of 2022. This is a, uh, a story game about a woman named Estelle who leaves her village and embarks on a journey to explore world on the brink of change. Uh, it looks like a, a bit of a, an indie darling type situation. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution has been announced for PlayStation VR 2. Um, I The first game released and then just kind of fell off the face of the earth, but it must have been relatively successful if they've made another. Uh, Eternites is a dating action game set in the apocalypse, which sounds like something that I, I would play. This sounds like a mashup. Who, of, doesn't, of different... who doesn't want to kill zombies on a date? like right <laughs> yes the worlds of dungeon crawling and dating are set to collide when eternites arrives on ps5 and 4 in early 2023 Goodness. there will be five quirky and lovable characters to fall in love with and you'll be able to explore their backstories when you aren't knee deep in dungeons there is also an ever ticking clock that Wait will force you to make choices and prioritize loot or love did you say knee deep in dungeons yes things just got really Things really escalated there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. And Tunic, uh, which was released on Xbox and PC in March. It is a, a very Legend of Zelda-like game. It will be coming to PlayStation this September. So huh. definitely, definitely check that out if you are a, a fan of the Zelda-like game. And uh, that's it for PlayStation State of Play. Okay. But another announcement was made in terms of new games, and this one has me pretty excited, Bender. Dragon Age 4 has been given an official name. It is called Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Oh. Yes, and anybody who played Inquisition immediately knows uh, who the Dreadwolf is and, and what story we are going to be pursuing in, in this next Dragon Age title. This announcement was was accompanied by a very, very purple Dragon Age logo. <laughs> Extraordinarily purple, little bit of fuchsia. Uh, I'm a fan, I, I'm loving it. I want to see more of this game. I am cautiously optimistic. Please be good, please be good. 
uh, I I miss the Dragon Age series. Yeah, that was like one of your favorite series, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, I have replayed played and replayed those games so many times that was definitely a series that I felt like I had to find every different every different option you know I had to get every ending and I had to get every scenario and if that meant I had to play the whole game again just to see this one different dialogue option then I was gonna do it so (laughs) I, I hope this is good and uh Joseph Tao threw in some commentary here. He says, the only thing I can say is that I am very cautiously excited. (laughs) I'm right there with you, Joseph. The Bioware of today is not the Bioware that made the Dragon Age games that I I know and love. And uh, I, I hope that, that it's going well. Yep. Another game that I absolutely adored was God of War, the 2018 God of War. And one of the primary reasons that I worked so hard to track down a PS5 is because I wanted to have one by the time God of War Ragnarok, the sequel, came out. Mm -hmm. And it looks like I may have gotten my machine just in time, because according to this VG247 article by Sheriff Saeed, God of War Ragnarok is nearing release because it has been rated in Korea. So we are nearing this release date. This rating was published uh, on May 26, and it mentions the usual warnings such as foul language, drug use, and and all the other things that make a game unsuitable for minors. Uh, It did not include a release date, but if it's being rated, that's a really good sign that we are going to see this game in 2022. It looks really good. Doesn't it? Uh, You can go dog sledding. The first game is on PC. And I can't recommend it highly enough. It it was just, I call it the first game, but I, I don't think what that's is this reading? What is this yeah. reading head wizard with the horns? And I love he's the, wonderful. The dog sledding. You sold me on the dog sledding. <laughs> um, have you ever been dog sledding? Probably. I not. haven't. No, um, I, we don't do a lot of dog sledding in New Mexico. I have been dog sledding. I mean, it's kind of part of Canada. Um, it is such a phenomenal experience. If you ever get the chance to do it do it absolutely yes. absolutely very cool so Award looks great very much looking forward to that uh horizon zero dawn is coming to the tv screen with a netflix adaptation what? and god of war has also been confirmed to have an adaptation coming for amazon prime interesting this is a vg 24 7 article by stephanie nunnally and uh yeah, they've announced this uh, Horizon Zero Dawn with Netflix, God of War for Amazon Prime. And um, I, I'm very interested. We don't have a ton of information. At That's basically all the information we have. In fact, I think, I think it could be good. I, I don't... It just depends on how it's handled, really. And I think with stuff like this that is so deeply beloved that it can be important to be sure that you look at it as its own separate entity yeah, and that you don't expect to get the, the same exact dopamine that you get from the games. You know, it, it may be a new form of dopamine that <laughs> these shows give you. It's, 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 it's a different I, experience. I think, I think that these streaming services actually may just find their fit in the gaming industry um, with respect to making streamable series or mini series out of triple a games yeah i i i don't know i don't feel very encouraged by what i've heard about the halo series right i haven't watched it but i i i feel like it's not it wasn't made for me a halo fan and that may be the case with these two they may not be made for us the gamer they may be made for the audience that will never experience that story via video games. Well, this is the thing, right? Like it's never going to be, it's never going to be what you experience in a video game Mm -hmm. because that is so immersive. You can't achieve that level of depth in any other medium. Not in a show. No way. I mean, Mm -hmm. I mean, Downton Abbey made me go to England and tour high clear castle <laughs> but that's beside the point um <laughs> imagine what the downtown abbey video game would have been like yes 
Uh, that's that's <laughs> brilliant. That is brilliant. It should be a telltale game. It should be a telltale game. Yes. Or don't nod. Oh my don't god! Don't nod. See could do now. good things with it. Fancy yes. dinners, walks in the garden. <sighs> Anyways, um, yeah, I, I'm not a Halo fan, and I haven't watched the series, so I don't know. Um, I've experienced it sort of in a backward sort of way, like, so with respect to Stranger Things. Oh, by the way, Stranger Things. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, you have to watch it. Season four, first half, watch it. It's very I good. still haven't watched season three. Ooh, season three is, you've got, like, oh, I got to rewatch the whole thing. It was so good. I, pl- I I did this a little bit backwards. Like I, I played the Stranger Things game mm-hmm. um, and I loved it. It was fantastic. Uh, so, you know, I think Netflix could really sort of monopolize on some of their Netflix originals by developing video games based on that. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know where they, they fit. The only thing we can do is wait and see. Yeah. So speaking of waiting... Uh, that is what people are going to be doing if they bought a Steam Deck with the with the intent of using it with the docking station. That docking station for the Steam Deck has been delayed, and there is currently no news on when that issue is going to be resolved. Interesting. Uh, according to the announcement, this delay is due to part shortages and COVID closures at manufacturing facilities. And it shouldn't affect the production of the Steam Deck itself, as those are made with different parts in different factories. The dock was planned to launch in late spring, but even at that time, Valve was admitting that it was not happening as early as they had planned. So uh, Steam Decks are are making their way out into the hands of consumers, but uh, if you want a docked experience, you're going to have to to continue waiting for a little longer. And that is the news. Have you ordered a Steam Deck? No, I have a Switch, and I think that's all the mobile gaming I need. Yeah, valid. If valid. I didn't have, I mean, the Steam Deck, it's an, it looks like a marvelous piece of technology. I am not disparaging anybody who wants one, or I, I would love to have one, but I think the expenditure, I can't justify it when I have a Switch to fulfill my, my mobile gaming needs. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, that is the news. I am now going to take us through some of the stocks oh yeah it's that sweet sweet time dollars are rolling people are freaking out actually the stock market was doing quite well this week i really gotta fix this bumper it's like just turn the volume down vendor overbearing um i've got to shorten it up a bit um the the stock market has been doing some weird things this week um my zoom stock is actually back at the price that i originally bought in uh at the beginning of the pandemic so uh that is a very good thing i am no longer uh freaking out and that comes after some very good earnings for the company so great job uh great job everyone um video game related stocks though sony closed at 92.64 up 38 cents from our last show microsoft down three dollars and 22 cents selling uh closing at 270 dollars and two cents uh, Nintendo down a dollar sixty seven, uh, closing at fifty four forty two. Take two up a dollar nineteen at one twenty six ninety seven. Activision uh, dropped by about thirty cents, closing at seventy seven eighty nine. Ubisoft down four eighty four, closing at four forty six ninety six. Uh, EA and ten cent up uh, over two dollars. EA closed at one forty one and ten cent at forty five dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, and of course, these are reported as of close today, and the comparison is to our last episode of that GameStack podcast. So, yeah, so Microsoft has decreased quite a bit, as is U- as has Ubisoft. Uh, we don't have any sort of special segment for this evening, but we are going to hop into what the community is playing. <laughs> so, this first image, Shaleen is from RTZ13. That is some cuteness. This game is called um, Alba, A Wildlife Adventure, and I love it. Uh, I am definitely going to play this because, you know, hiking. Um, But RTZ13 says, I just completed this little game called Alba, A Wildlife Adventure, where you play as a little girl, Alba, 
visiting her grandparents on a Mediterranean island during the Aww. summer. A very peaceful, non-violent game, perfect for completionists without becoming exhausting. You help restoring a decaying wildfire reserve while stopping an evil corporation with the corrupt mayor who wants to build a massive hotel. Gameplay mainly explorational. Uh, involves identifying birds, collecting rubbish, and fixing old benches and bird feeders. How endearing. She oh. looks so happy, this little protagonist. Just describe the image for our audio listeners. So this is just, it's precious. And our protagonist looks a little bit like a, a Fisher Price toy. A little bit like a Fisher Price toy. Uh, she's adorable. She's wearing a little baseball cap, has her hair in pigtails, wearing a, a little backpack, little t-shirt shorts. And behind her is a charming little cottage. Uh, next to a palm tree covered in a grapevine and surrounded by beautiful, beautiful flowers. There's a grape arbor in the background, a little rocking chair on the porch. I believe there is a donkey behind the house. And uh, uh, just, a, yeah, a lovely, wow, lovely Wow, good wall. spotting. I never would have mm -hmm. seen that. Yeah, um, it's, we, it's lovely. We also have this other image from Ooh. RTZ13, and it's it's... The it's the girl's like hands, which are like su super nubby phone. thumbs. I love it. And she's got her little smartphone. Uh, terrible taking signal. Taking a picture of the ducks. And she's taking pictures of, of the ducks in the weeds. It's great. I love this. It's yeah. so precious. Totally, totally into it. Um, speaking of things that I'm also into. Uh... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so we have another image. This uh, image comes from Frankel's Conina, and uh, she says that she did a story run of two Elder Scrolls Online dungeons with friends today. I'm not saying that I'm into dungeons. Let's just be very clear for the audio listeners. <laughs> the image is of a gentleman who is rather handsome. So just yes, um, for clarity. Wow, this is awkward. Um, and these two excerpts from conversations made her chuckle. So the first conversation is uh, Jack Harn, and he says, It was this unholy screeching, like the world's largest seagull was coming from my potato fritters. <laughs> Might have been my imagination or the knock on my head. I was out cold before I could even take a look. <sighs> Brilliant. Uh, and then she, and then we also have this other image, uh, which made it in from last week uh, to interrupt the our, our storyline so i'm just going to briefly i say, mean elden ring is always on it's hard elden mode, ring, so it's even... it, yeah it's elden ring from vaccinator and uh this is a picture of him in the capital we talked it's about even complicating our, our podcast elden ring. um and then we're just hopping back to frankel's uh she also posts the second one of um uh, zaji captain zaji who says whether it's dragons or plunder zaji really likes your okay fine i'll do it attitude walker <laughs> you're a good one that is is so good that's and, brilliant uh, it's like you know it's it's is this the khajiit is that yeah that's a khajiit it's a khajiit cat and he's got he's very embellished with all of this gold and he's got trinkets and he's got a bandana on with trinkets and it's it's all very well and good lovely um then we have this image um from patriot gaming usa who says this bear almost killed my buddy and Daisy. So we made a meme of it and it's a picture of a bear standing on his two hind legs, kind of just sort of cocked and looking at you. Um, and the caption is y'all got Wi-Fi. <laughs> this bear is so unimpressed. I love it. <laughs> uh, then this one, we have this Ooh, one. What's that? Tennis. This is state of decay two. What a cool um, car. I didn't know there were cars. Yeah, he says collaboration with Sea of Thieves item car called Megalodon. Um, oh, it does look like the Meg. And it's, it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's an actual collaboration with Sea of Thieves or Rare or if he's just being. I'm cheeky. sure it is vendor because these are both Microsoft first party games. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it looks like a Mustang, I think. It was absolutely decorated like a Meg. Um, and it totally has like the scars and the bright blue and purple sort of lines on it mm -hmm. from from uh, from the classic Meg in Sea of Thieves. Gorgeous. Excellent. Uh, then I've got this. This is my entry. 
Ooh. Yeah. So last on the last episode of GameStack, I talked about getting back into Microsoft Flight Sim. And I have been flying the um, the Cessna, uh, the Beechcraft, which is a dual prop plane. So there's there's um, propellers on both sides. And uh, I had done a flight from Washington to uh, state of Washington to Victoria Island, which is where I'll be going in a month. Uh, so I've been doing flights there to try to like see how close it relates. And it's just beautiful. Like I just I came in to, um, you know, this is this is this is still the mainland coming in. Um, but oh, I had another picture in here somewhere. It's gone now. Um, maybe I could pull it up somewhere. Screenshot. Let me see. Oh, I know what happened. Give me a second here. Um, so, yeah, I've been flying into Victoria from different areas uh, in the U.S. and Canada just to see what it looks like. So this is from the cockpit view. Um, and uh, as you can see on the left side, uh, this is actually Vancouver Island here. Uh, and okay. this, this little inlet, uh, this is Victoria. And then further up on the other side of – it's kind of blocked by the window, but um, – there's there's this sort of inlet here, right here. That's where I'm gonna be. Nice. It's, it's right in there. It's called Saanich. So, uh, and then where's the last image that I wanted to share with you guys? This one. Uh, this is uh, an image that I took in Satisfactory, and uh, I was at this super high point in the world, and there was all this creepy fog. Jess and I were looking for crash sites. So all across this colossally huge map, um, there are different drop pods and crash sites of ships and stuff, and you can salvage the components of it for Neat. building your factory. Um, and you can pull hard drives out of the, the crash sites and then research the hard drives to unlock new things. So I took this shot because I just I thought it was just so majestic. Anyways, that's uh, screenshots and stories. What have you been playing, Shaleen? Well, I, I went fishing with you last week after the show, and that was Good. a lovely time. We had a very relaxing little fishing trip. All we did was was just fish and see if thieves. Uh, no quests, nothing else. We just just fished. It was, and it lovely. was lovely. Yeah, I don't uh, get to f I don't get to just chill and fish as much as I'd like, and it's my yes. favorite thing in the game. It's I totally quite enjoyed favorite. it. I needed that relaxation. It's every bit as nice as, as fishing in real life, I think. <laughs> so then I don't have to deal with, like, actual fish. <laughs> sea of Thieves and Red Dead Redemption are the two best games for video game fishing, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm actually not a big fan of, of like, actual fishing. I enjoy video game fishing. Yes, agree. And I used to go fishing with my family. And the first time I caught a fish, I was absolutely horrified, you know, because the fish is like flopping, flopping around. around. He's unhappy. You know, he's got this hook in his mouth and like it, it was a bad time for both of us. And I cried. So after that, I, I started just fishing with no hook on. <laughs> so I could kind of share in the experience with my family, but uh, without the horror of, of catching a fish. That's adorable. I did occasionally tie some bait to the end of my line to just feed the fish um, because like you do. Uh, I played some Fallout 76 over the last week. <laughs> and the most notable thing about that was that Archon and I checked out the PTS, the public test server, which is currently... Uh, it's currently testing out the new expeditions, uh, which of course includes the new area of the pit, uh, which is of course a revisited area from Fallout 3. And the pit is fantastic. I think that people who are fans of a traditional Fallout experience will get a lot out of this area. As soon as the vertebrate landed and, and we got out and we were walking around, my heart was at peace like I, I just immediately was back in the fallout that that I love nice. and I I do love fallout 76 I get a lot of joy out of that game I'm not trying to dog it but 
it is, it is a vibrant living world. And that is not what I expect from a fallout. You know, it's, it's, it, there are green growing things and, and beautiful vegetation. And that's not the apocalypse that I expect in a fallout game. And the pit gives me the apocalypse I expect. It is an urban uh, situation. I don't think that's necessarily why it's, it's um, scratches that itch, you know, new Vegas was not urban at all. Uh, and it felt fallouty, but the pit feels very fallouty in a traditional way. And I, I think that you might enjoy coming back vendor to, to check out expeditions. Um, I, I think, I don't know that it's something that would hold you for long, but I think you would like exploring the environment at least a few times. Uh, I do wish that the pit was a traditional location that you could just go visit instead of being kind of an event, okay. uh, because how it works is you have to do some, some little quests and that gets you batteries to fuel the vertebrate. Okay. And then you hop on the vertebrate and travel to the pit and there's a quest line that you do there. And it, it is, it takes a, a pretty significant chunk of time. I think we spent about an hour doing the quest, but it's not timed. So you can just explore at your leisure and, and enjoy and soak in that environment. And mm. I think it's definitely worth visiting uh, and reinstalling, even if it's only briefly, just to experience that environment. It's, it's beautifully done. They did, they did a really great job putting that environment together. Uh, the new characters are great. There are new characters at the pit and also new characters in Appalachia. I really enjoyed all of them. The voice acting is good. Uh, it was really funny because some of the dialogue was placeholder dialogue because it's, it's still the test server, you know, right, it's, it's right. not a final version yet. So some of it was like robot voices <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny. Um, Archon got super spooked by, by one character that just kind of turned and looked at him and, and talked and in the mechanical voice and it was really funny. <laughs> um, but I enjoy all of the new characters. Uh, Giuseppe is a new vendor and, and he's really fun to talk to. And uh, yeah, I, I really, really like all the new characters both in and out of the pit. Uh, it's really fun having new things and new places and new people. Uh, I, I feel like I said once a long time ago that if they would just you know, continue making Fallout DLCs. I just play them forever. And that's kind of what I'm getting now. <laughs> so yay, that's that's a good thing. I do have very, very mixed feelings about what they have done with the White Spring. Oh, really? The White Spring, yes. People have moved into the White Spring vendor. And those robots kept that place pristine. It was, it was in excellent shape and now it's full of people and they're making messes Leaving and they're the moving filthy organic residue. Everywhere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they're moving the art around and they built this horrible log wall, uh, closing off the, the ground floor, the lower floor. And I I'm told by the internet, I, I believe it was Jess specifically who mentioned that they have changed that horrible, ugly log wall. Uh, I don't know what they've changed it to. I hope it's better because uh, it was it was absolutely hideous. The White Spring is is this beautiful, luxurious building, and they just junked the place up, and there was no need for it. And I was furious about it, just absolutely furious. And I, I don't think that I like having it full of people. I liked that it was this this situation with robots, and that they had had. Uh, driven the guests out and murdered those who stayed. And I, I thought that was a really interesting part of Appalachia's lore and uh, that it, it really sort of, it made sense as to why you can't live in the white spring itself. I, I, I liked it. How would you feel? So, how would you feel if it was like the white glove society that moved? The white glove society. <laughs> I I would feel about the same because there's they're still people, even if they're they're cannibals and <laughs> and well dressed cannibals. I, I would still. Um, I mentioned Giuseppe the vendor. 
Giuseppe sells things for a new currency. And this is something that I'm angry about, Vendor. They have introduced yet another new currency. So now there's like 87 currencies um, in this video game. And stamps are the new currency. You get them on expeditions. I got five from the expedition that Archon and I did. The cheapest thing in Giuseppe's inventory costs 85 stamps. And he has a full inventory full of stuff. So that's that's dumb pricing. That's really dumb. It's it's gonna take like 20 something days just to get the cheapest thing in his inventory. Lame, super lame. Um, there is a new character in the White Spring named Orlando. And Orlando represents the management of the White Spring. I really dig Orlando. Uh, and they have this, this mysterious management that they're representing. And they will not give you any details about it. Please tell it's... me he's like at, he's like in the manager's office. Uh, they are in the manager's office. I, I'm pretty sure Orlando is non-binary. Uh, and they've moved into the manager's office. And... It's, it's just so funny the way that they communicate about um, like, yes, management approves of this and, and management has sent me to be the liaison between yeah. the responders. And uh, so funny. Can I'm a big fan. Can I speak to your manager? They need to put that in. <laughs> yes. Somewhere. Yes. That's incredible. Uh, there are a ton of new events that are going to be added with this update when it drops in the fall. Uh, some of them are, are big events. Some of them are, are short, smaller events. And my favorite one that I experienced was uh, this cooking mini game. It was like Fallout Overcooked. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> so yes, I was in the I was in the downstairs, and they have a little French chef down there, and uh, and she's like, "Hello, I am Esme Rousseau, and we are making venison stew." And, and, and I apologize mm, for the terrible, good. terrible French accent. So uh, you have to stir the stew the whole time that you're cooking. You have to come back and stir the stew, or the stew will burn. And you have to go and find ingredients. So you have to go through the storeroom and through all the shelving. And you have to find the potatoes. And you have to find the venison, and find some carrots. And you have to prepare all the ingredients separately. And meanwhile, you keep having to run back and stir the soup. And uh, then you add your ingredients. And at the end, I had the opportunity to spike the stew with Psycho, which of course I did <laughs> because Jim Justice, he's like that. And uh, I, I gave it to a raider who was, who was in the building and he just, he adored my stew. Uh, he said it made him feel powerful. Nice, so nice. that was a really, really fun mini game. It was very silly. Um, and another note on expeditions, as much as I enjoyed the experience of expeditions, the people, the characters, the environment, and the quest itself was fun. The rewards are not good enough. And I think mm. they've written that they are going to be improving this, but the rewards that I got out of this expedition that took us around an hour, they were not as good of rewards as you get from a daily op, which takes, you know, eight minutes. So <laughs> that's, that's dumb. That's not going to keep people coming back. It's, um, if, if they want this to be something with legs, they're going to need to change those rewards. I just have the gif of Spongebob with showing off his leg. Yes. That's all hairy. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, I, I enjoyed my experience with the PTS. I am looking forward to the final version of Expeditions. And I, I do hope that you will come at least just have a look around, uh, even if it's not the thing that brings you back. And I don't think it will be. I, I think would... you would enjoy the experience of, of walking around in that. I think area. I would prefer to watch you play it because then I don't have to spend four hours installing the game. <laughs> you know what? You've got a deal. <laughs> so We'll do a little stream and you can hang out and, and give me directions on what you want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. I and I also that. just wanted to mention a really good book that I read recently. Oh. It's called Across the Sand by Hugh Howey. Uh, I don't know if you remember, I used to talk a lot about a book by Hugh Howey called Wool. Yeah, uh, which was potentially one of my favorite post-apocalyptic stories of oh, all really? time. 
And this uh, across the sand is set in the same universe. It will release in October. Um, they sent me an early copy, which I was super, super excited about. And I, I, I really liked this book. It was have a lovely post-apocalypse story. Have you read Earth Abides? I have. Yeah. yeah. It was so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I, I, I that, love apocalypse stories. I should add so good. across the sand to my, to my, my boss actually just told me about a book that I should read. Actually. And, I, and just, just a note across the sand is a sequel, which I did oh. not know when I read it. So you will want to read sand first. Oh, yes. Okay. I, I read them out of order, but it did, it did work as a standalone novel. So Highly recommend Across the Sand comes out in October. Hugh Howie, check it out. Hmm. Um, How about you, Bender? You been I, anything else? Do anything else interesting? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of like IRL stuff. Uh, so I, I did, I managed to do my first hike of the season last weekend, uh, which was really nice. Uh, we didn't run into any bears, also a good thing. But apparently when we got back to the staging area, uh, some people in the lot had told us that there was a cougar in the in the area, so Yikes. that was a little frightening. Yeah, because uh, they can just hop out of trees right on top of you, like so. Um, but it was a, a really nice day to to get out on the mountains. Um, we were in a a little canyon called Coral Creek Canyon, uh, and uh, it was um, it was really nice. And then I have been playing more satisfactory with Jess. Um, we have really, our factory is really coming along. We now have walls and a ceiling. Um, so the way we have it set up is that we have like this central building. And then in the central building, we have storage, but the storage comes, everything that goes into the storage comes into the building via conveyor belts on the second floor um so there's this whole network structure of conveyor belts moving material and then it drops them down to the first floor in this set of storage bins it's quite ingenious if you ask me it's because i designed it um <laughs> and uh and then on the first floor we also have um uh these things called assemblers which are like basically like robotic manufacturers like they they build stuff right components and we have those going into another storage bin and then we have these things called manufacturers all on the main floor um and then we've been doing some more sort of adventuring around to try to find these hard drives uh, at these crash sites because jess wants to be able to uh research how to make diluted fuel so that we can have a more efficient energy source to run our all of our plants uh, and so we've been sort of working towards that. We also coincidentally have built an entire, um, do you remember the factory carts that I told you about? Those cute little, those cute I little do. carts. I do, they were adorable. So we actually built like a skate park on the roof of the factory uh, with all these like half ramps and like pipes and stuff where you can do like jumps in the little factory carts. It's so much fun. Um, and uh yeah, so that's that's been quite nice. Um, just just sort of hanging out. We watch Frasier while we build. So, <laughs> and um, and then uh, what else did I play? Oh, my, some more Microsoft Microsoft Flight Sim. Um, so making my way downtown, walking fast. Um, yada yada. Uh, yeah, what else? Space and then fast. fishing, fishing with you, fishing with you. I've. I haven't been playing a lot of video games. I've, I've got to admit. Um, and uh, it's just life stuff is sort of taken over. Uh, I think a little bit. Uh, I have also been watching season four of stranger things, which have consumed all of my mm -hmm. evenings right now. So I just finished it. So it's, uh, it was good. It was very good. I have some things to say about it, but I don't want to say anything because I'm totally going to spoil it. So anyways, that's my gameplay. Lovely. That's also coincidentally a show. So don't forget the show is sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to oakandcrow.com, 
can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee blend. $2 from every bag goes to the Children's Miracle Network. You can also email us at info at wejustlovegames.com. And you can find Shaleen on Twitter at Shaleen L, myself at Vendertron N, and the network account at We Just Love Games. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash We Just Love Games, facebook.com slash groups slash We Just Love Games. We are on Discord, so if you're listening live to the show right now, you can scroll down right below and click the Discord link. That'll bring you into the chat after dark. If you are listening after the fact, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash we just love games, which is our channel where we record the show live every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Don't forget, we're also on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and now also Google Podcasts. It's a thing. I think we're just automatically there. I think um, so too. Which I discovered. Most of most of these providers just pull from Apple podcasts. Yeah, they just pull from somewhere else. Uh, so please like, subscribe, and review the show. Send us a message. We would love to hear what you have to say on many of the issues uh, and and things that we talk about on the show. Thank you all for listening. Shalene, do you have a last word? Hello there. <laughs>